Hey Zalibus, this is Super Summer God Barbecue, and today we are going to be speaking about the rarest cards in WWE Supercard ever. Why? Well, because it's a topic of conversation that kind of came up when the limited edition Undertaker was revealed, and people would start talking about it in the DMs or private messages to me and emails to me. What are the rarest cards? And I got a couple of questions about that, and I thought to myself, well, what are the rarest cards? So, a little bit of research, and some of these might not be correct in terms of numbers, but in terms of the rarity of the cards, they absolutely 100% are some of the rarest cards you're gonna be able to find. Some of these are never available. Again, some of them are only available to certain people. So, we're gonna go through from number 10 all the way through to number one, top 10 rarest cards in Dodo U Supercard from season one, all the way through to season three. Let's go! Oh, and whilst you're there, before we get into number 10, remember to hit a like on this video if you're gonna hit it with a hit of a hug. Let's just all hug the like button, okay? I don't want anything else. Let's just just hug it, okay? Let's hug the like button as hard as we can. Hugging hard. Sounds good, okay. Doesn't sound wrong at all. Uh, yeah, hug it as hard as you can. And remember to subscribe to the channel using the little button that's just below me right now. Go to subscribe right now and um, Enjoy! So we start off at number 10 of the rarest cards in WWE Supercard, and that is to start off with the Super Tokens. Now, a lot of people are going to say that actually technically factually this isn't correct, but there really wasn't a number 10 because the honorary mention I've got later on was available very, very early in Season 2, but uh, number 10, I used the Super Tokens because these were the cards that were given out to GameStop uh, to sell and included such superstars as Roman Reigns, John Cena, Cage, and Stone Cold Steve Austin, if you could find him. And these were an incredibly good idea by Cat Daddy Games and by 2K as a way of you know investing more time to WWE Supercard. It ultimately actually was the uh, the current players who kind of took the super tokens up because they had the exclusive images. But now they are basically never to be seen again. Those super cards are for season two. Uh, they were ultra rare and super rare cards, and unfortunately, those will probably never ever see the light of day again. Now, just to clarify, when I'm saying about the super token, I am talking about the GameStop exclusive ones, not the ones that have now become the collector's series. The collector's series are not rare at all. You can buy them from the pack store, but the GameStop items, the ones that have the GameStop writing, the pros and the singles, come in at number 10 on our list of the rarest. WWE Super Cards in existence. Moving on to number 9, we have the WrestleMania Throwbacks. Now, the throwback packs were released in Season 1 at around about the time we had a Kane Road to Glory. Now, this Kane Road to Glory had various, various problems. One of those was an update just come out for the game, which meant that these uh, new things called throwback packs were now available which would go and spam from Ultra Rare, moving on up all the way up to WrestleMania tier, which is the final tier of WWE Supercard Season 1. Now in WWE Supercard Season 1, the WrestleMania tier throwback cards were ludicrously hard to get hold of. I mean, these things, you either got lucky and got yourself a pro, or you just kept getting hit with legendaries and epics and Ultra Rares all the time. I know from my own personal experience, it's not fun, I can tell you that much. So, to get yourself a pro of these, or any kind of WrestleMania throwback, is probably one of the rarest cards you can get in the game, and given that, as of Season 2, those cards become unavailable, and they're only available for, what, two to three months at tops, taming those cards was uh, hard enough, then that goes down as a ninth rarest set of cards, including the likes of Jimmy Snooker, which will come up later on as well, and also including the likes of Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and the infamous Tito Santana and Rick Rude cards, which had stats beyond even the fusions in WD Supercard Season 1. Now we move on to the next one, and this I would say is more of an opinion, and more is based on the pro than anything else, and that is money in the bank Rusev. Now Rusev! Uh, was not particularly popular because he was released and he was the only time in WWE Supercard, this is for the WrestleMania tier, that was released where you had three cards you could go for. So you had uh, Rusev, you had John Cena, and you had Becky Lynch. Now obviously everyone went for Becky Lynch first, a few people went for John Cena first because he's very popular. Rusev was barely chosen at all, like, in fact I've I, I barely seen anyone with a Rusev card. 
So he was just unfortunately, even though he actually was a better card than John Cena, I think in two or three stats, uh, this Rusev card unfortunately was the the victim of being in not only a female or what it was then a diva, uh, WrestleMania Money in the Bank, but also the victim of being next to John Cena and. That's never a good thing. But moving on to number seven, we have the Sami Zayn ring domination. Oh, ring domination, we love you. Every two weeks, you grace us with your presence in season three. And even in season two, you were one of the most looked forward to events until you literally became too repetitive for your own good. Unfortunately, that wasn't a problem back in season one. In fact, the way ring domination used to work is you used to get one card for the pro in one event for ring domination and these were ring domination exclusive cards just to uh, make you aware the, these cards were exclusive to ring domination only two were ever released and there was a Sami Zayn and an Undertaker the reason why Sami Zayn was so rare was because the first time that people were able to get their hands on a Sami Zayn card and the second time in fact all the way up to the Undertaker card the ring domination event was so ludicrously hard and so ludicrously expensive to be able to obtain one of these cards. In fact, I'll give you an example because it probably doesn't make sense that I would be saying that some people had to spend anything northwards of eight to 10,000 credits to obtain one of these cards. It also took in excess of nine to 10 hours of constant gameplay throughout the weekend. Now, the reason for this is actually really simple. It's because now we enjoy an amazing eight shards if you have pick doubles, or four if you don't have pick doubles for every win you get. Back then, there were two. Two shards for a win. The next Sami Zayn event, they increased it up to three, I believe, or potentially four, and they increased it for losses as well. But it was only until the Undertaker event where they increased it up to eight, which we now have as the default, that uh, things started to become easier for players. But that Sami Zayn card was one of the hardest cards to obtain and not many people actually got the pro of that event card. But moving on from Sami Zayn to the legacy of the top five PCC cards. Now, for those of you who don't know what PCC was, it was a game mode that apparently seems to have been cut from WWE Supercard Season 3 altogether. Now, just to clarify a couple of points on PCC, it's never been officially confirmed that this event mode is going away. Everyone is just assuming that at some point it will return, but it's also never been confirmed it's coming back. Most people remember PCC for its Season 2 equivalent, where you could get a PCC card, a single PCC card, if you finished in the top 2,750, which is much better considering back in Legendary tier and in Survivor tier, of WWE Supercard Season 1. You had to place him in the first five places to have a shot at the pro. Amazing. And these cards include the likes of Randy Orton, Sting, Goldust, the infamous Daniel Bryan Fastlane card. And unfortunately for some, these cards were just out of reach, but we were seeing point totals of anything up to 55,000 points to be able to obtain one of these elusive cards and some of them had some of the best designs but i want to know which cards out of this list so far have you been able to get yourself or have you obtained single or pro and let me know in the comment section below that'd be absolutely amazing because we are about to enter the top five rarest cards in wwe supercard with touching first of all on number five the limited edition undertaker this people are more aware of because it happened recently but it seems to be so few people with this card and especially the pro card the pro version of this seems to be so rare that i'm putting it above the top five pccs because technically you could obtain the single pcc quite easily but as far as i'm concerned i would place limited edition and take a purely because of the difficulty to be able to obtain one of these cards and this was a limited edition event where a qr code was required to be able to get one of these cards and it was only released on wa supercards Twitter account. This limited edition taker was only available for three days uh, during the Royal Rumble weekend of 2017 and you could pull and get it from a King of the Ring. But it was so rare that most people gave up after the first two tries of the QR codes and just accepted their fate they would never get one. And uh, this is an example of how not to run an event if you have a limited edition card because uh, yeah those QR codes were pretty scarce. Now moving on to number four 
These were very, very controversial cards. We're now moving down to cards that physically were given out to specific people or were achieved using incredible feats. So we are going to start off with number four, the special edition, John Cena, Shawn Michaels, and Seth Rollins from WWE Supercard Season 2. And this special edition, John Cena, Shawn Michaels, and Seth Rollins were given out to three different YouTubers and to certain members of the press. Now, as far as I know, and I may get this wrong, the Seth Rollins was given to Pulse, formerly known as CM Pulse. The Shawn Michaels was given to Tony Pizza Guy, who you can find if I link him up in the top right hand side and John Cena was given to resident John Cena fan Luja Mania or Luge PS3 whichever one you know all those guys being very 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 popular WWE YouTubers there was one more which we'll talk about in a second because it's a little bit higher up the list but the reason why this is a little bit uh, lower down the list to so number four is because these cards eventually became available to be able to be packed in the main event packs and people have managed to get their hands on them albeit very very scarcely these cards are incredibly rare to get and at the time they were only available to these select few people for quite a while and they are available to see in their initial videos for WWE Supercard Season 2 so go check them out but these cards uh, do eventually turn up and in fact I, if I'm not wrong that John Cena card is permanently Lugermania's champion in game but moving up from special event cards to a very special event card, the first ever PCC card. This card is Barack Lesnar, and this was in the legendary tier for the initial event, the first event of WWE Supercard Season 1, the PCC including Brock Lesnar and John Cena. Now this Brock Lesnar card is specifically the pro card because this is the only time where one pro card of a certain card was obtainable, but only to one person, from a competition style anyway. This was the first ever PCC, very hotly contested. So this brought there's the card leveled, the John Cena card, and only one person, yes, you heard me right, only one person was ever able to be able to get the pro of this Card. This introduced the era of competition in WWE Supercard, which now emanates in game modes such as PCC, Teams PCC, and uh, effectively gave birth to the events in game. In every event in game now, as originally evolved around PCC at some point. So this was the first ever event card. The pro was only available to one person, and that person is a legendary Mokai, who I've never actually spoken to. And I, not many people have. And I believe he still plays in WWE Supercard Season 3 as we speak. But he is the legend known as Mokai. But moving on to number 2, it's only one of two cards. And we will talk about number 1 in a second. But both of these cards were only available to one person. Now the only reason why number 1 is number 1 is because the person who was given this card got given the pro version as well. So obviously they had the pro. Whereas the second person, as far as we are aware, was not given the second card to the pro or did not end up proing the card. And the first card, which is number two in our list, is Xavier Woods from the Survivor PCC back in Season 2 against Chris Jericho. Now, I know this PCC very well because it's when I did my first ever 24-hour or 30-hour charity stream. And during that charity stream, I wasn't able to have the entire 30 hours, but I was able to raise a hell of a lot of money for charity. But it also gave birth to this Xavier Woods card, which was currently in a feud with Jericho over a musical instrument called Francesca. You may know her from WWE Programming right now, but Francesca uh, basically was the reason why this whole feud started. It wasn't actually a match between these two guys, as far as I was aware at the time, or at least in, at that point there wasn't. And this card was given to Xavier Woods when he started playing W Supercard as part of him joining the squad Forever Smug. And he was handed these cards over as like an appreciation for him playing, I'm assuming, or do a secret after his champ. It'd be like a kind of exclusive thing to him. So he would only ever have those cards and it would be his. And this is the first time that a loser PCC card has been given out to a person and is still available on that person. And if you ever come across the guy used food, no space, in WWE Supercard, it might just be Xavier Woods, Austin Creed himself. And this one 
is only number one, as I said, because they had the pro version of this card. Now, let me know what you think about this kind of series before we get to number one in the comment section below. Make sure you remember to leave a like on this video and uh, we'll get to number one right now, which is the legendary, super epic Dean Ambrose that only Tubby Emu has. Yes, I announced it like that because it was a very, very controversial video that brought everyone's attention to the fact that he had a card that no one else had. And this is a Dean Ambrose from WWE Supercard Season 2. And it was an epic card with a special background, much like the Shawn Michaels, the John Cena, and the Seth Rollins were given to Luge, Tony Pizza Guy, and also to Pops. Now, all three of those cards were available in the main event pack, but because Dean Ambrose has never main evented WrestleMania, his card has never been available, and probably will now never ever be available. Now, Tubby Emu had infamously made a video about this and kind of showed off a little bit, which uh, you know still joked. But this card was only available to Tubby and was for the same purposes of this John Cena, Shawn Michaels, and Seth Rollins as a promotional item for promoting and being a member of the press as such, or the new gaming press, new media press, at WWE's 2K16 event for and WWE Supercard Season 2. This Dean Ambrose epic card will go down as the rarest card in WWE Supercard history. Now, before we end this video, there is one other mention I'd like to give, and that is to a Kevin Owens and Charlotte card, which were provided to the lead community manager, but the reason I've discounted that is because he is the community manager, so of course he can have any card he wants. The last one, as a honorary mention, is Jimmy Snooker Ultra Rare from Season 2, because you cannot pull the card. It is withdrawn from being able to be pulled off the board, by WWE Supercard after a uh, couple of legal issues, uh, which I'm sure you guys can look into yourself. But uh, before his passing, he was removed from the board, which means that in Season 3 and Season 2, at this point in time, you cannot pull Jimmy Snooker from the board the Ultra Red tier. But that is it from me. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And let me know what you thought about this idea in the comments section below. Remember to smash a like on this video. In fact, you just smash a, a hug on the like button as hard as you can. I don't know how you can hit a hard hug. I don't know. Maybe Bailey can tell us, but whatever. Also, don't forget to subscribe using the link that's going to pop up just to the side of me here. And also, don't forget to check the description below for details to Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and Facebook. Go and like and follow on those pages. And I'll see you all soon. One last thing, and that is to... Sonic!